welcome to morning prayer and office of readings uh, here at Ascension. You can join just by listening, or you can open up uh, iBreviary or divineoffice.org to follow along and sing along with us, or if you have your own breviary, we'll be using Psalm 100 for the invitatory today. We gather our, our selves and ask the Lord to take away any distracting thoughts so that with the angels we might adore and worship him during this holy, this holy office. Many people have never prayed the divine office, but it's the official prayer of the church where we gather as the body of Christ to sing the Lord's praises. In the Acts of the Apostles, it, we hear about John and Peter going up to the temple at the hour of prayer, it's the hour to go and sing the, the psalms. To, to pray in the temple, and we can, as Christians, have continued to pray the Psalms and to, to, to sanctify the day. And so we do that today with the, the divine office as we enter in with the whole church, as we sing the Lord's praises. Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will proclaim your praise. Come, let us worship Christ the Lord, who for our sake endured temptation and suffering. Cry with joy to the Lord our all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before him singing for joy. Come, let us worship Christ the Lord, who for our sake endured temptation and suffering. Know that he, the Lord, is God. He made us, we belong to him. We are his people, the sheep of his flock. Come, let us worship Christ the Lord, who for our sake endured temptation and suffering. Go within his gates, giving thanks. Enter his courts with songs of praise. Give thanks to him and bless his name. Come, let us worship Christ the Lord, who for our sake endured temptation and suffering. Indeed, how good is the Lord. Eternal is merciful love. He is faithful from age to age. Come, let us worship Christ the Lord, who for our sake endured temptation and suffering. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Come, let us worship Christ the Lord, who for our sake endured temptation and suffering. Take up your cross, the Savior said, If you would my disciple be, Deny yourself, the world forsaken, Humbly follow after me. Take up your cross, let not its weight Fill your weak spirit with the Lord, his strength shall bear your spirit up, shall brace your heart and nerve your heart. Take up your cross, then in his strength, and every danger calmly brave to guide you to a better home and victory over death and grave. Take up your cross and follow Christ, nor think till death to lay it down, for only he who bears the cross may hope to wear the glorious crown. To you, great Lord, the one in three, all praise forevermore ascend, O oh, grant us here below to see the heavenly life that knows no man. Lord you are our, Lord you are our savior we will praise you forever 
scholars have told us the story of the things you did in their day, you yourself in days long ago. You plant them, you open them a nation, to life and spread to many peoples know. Most of them bear on one their own, no one of them was a friendless tree. It was your light and your arm, and the light of your face for your loved ones. It is you, my King, my God, who granted victories to Jacob. Through you we beat down our foes, in your name we trampled our aggressors. For it was not in my day that I trusted, nor yet was I saved by my sword. It was you who saved us from our foes, it was you who put our foes to shame. All day long our boast was in God, and we raised your name without ceasing. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, now, and will be forever. Amen. Lord, you are our Savior. We will praise you forever. In our silence, we take a moment to think about our intentions for this next psalm. Spare us, O Lord, do not bring your own people into contempt. Yet now you have rejected us, disgraced us, you no longer go with all our hands. You make us retreat from the foe, and our enemies plunder us at will. You make us like sheep for the slaughter, and scatter us among the nations. You sell your own people for nothing, and make no profit by the sale. You make us the talk of our neighbors, the laughing stock of all who are mean. Among the nations you make us a byword, among the peoples a thing of derision. All day long my disgrace is before me, my face is covered with shame. At the voice of the taunter, the scoffer, at the sight of the foe and the avenger. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Spare us, O Lord, do not bring your own people into contempt. Rise up, O Lord, and save us, for you are merciful. This befell us, though we had not forgotten you, though we had not been false to your covenant, though we had not withdrawn our hearts, though our feet had not strayed from your path. Yet you crushed us in a place of sorrow and covered us with the shadow of death. Had we forgotten the name of our God, or stretched our hands to another God. Would not God have found us out, even with the secrets of the heart? It is for you that we faint like all the long, and are trampled as sheep for the slaughter. Awake, O oh Lord, why do you sleep? Arise, do not reject us forever. Why do you hide your face from us? and forget our compassion and misery. For we are brought down low to the dust, our body like flax laid on the earth. Stand up and come to our help, redeem us because of your love. Glory to the 
Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Rise up, O Lord, and save us, for you are merciful. Let us pray. Lord, rise up and come to our aid. With your strong arm, lead us to freedom, as you mightily delivered our forefathers. Since you are the King who knows the secrets of our hearts, fill them with the light of truth. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. When I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men to myself. And the letter to the Hebrews. Since we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast to our profession of faith. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weakness, but one who is tempted in every way that we are, yet never sinned. So let us confidently approach the throne of grace to receive mercy and favor and to find help in time of need. Every high priest is taken from among men and made their representative before God to offer gifts and sacrifices for sin. He is able to deal patiently with erring sinners, for he himself is beset by weakness, and so must make sin offerings for himself as well as for the people. One does not take this honor on his own initiative, but only when called by God, as Aaron was. Even Christ did not glorify himself with the office of high priest. He received it from the one who said to him, You are my son. Today, I have begotten you. Just as he says in another place, you are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. In the days when he was in the flesh, he offered prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to God, who was able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverence. Son, though he was, he learned obedience from what he suffered. And when perfected, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him, designated by God as high priest, according to the order of Melchizedek. Though he was the Son of God, Christ learned obedience through what he suffered. And now, for all who obey him, he has become the source of eternal life. In the days of his earthly life, he prayed, crying aloud, and he submitted so humbly that his prayer was heard. And now, for all who obey him, he has become the source of eternal life. From an Easter homily by St. Melito of Sardis, Bishop, subtitled, the lamb, was slain. The, la the lamb that was slain has delivered us from death and given us life. There was much proclaimed by the prophets about the mystery of the Passover. The mystery is Christ. And to him be glory forever and ever. Amen. For the sake of suffering humanity, he came down from heaven to earth clothed himself in that humanity in the virgin's womb, and was born a man. Having then a body capable of suffering, he took the pain of fallen man upon himself. He triumphed over the diseases of soul and body that were its cause, and by his spirit, which is incapable of dying, he dealt man's destroyer death a final blow. He was led forth like a lamb, he was slaughtered like a sheep, 
He ransomed us from our servitude to the world as he, has, as he had ransomed Israel from the land of Egypt. He freed us from our slavery to the devil as he had freed Israel from the hand of Pharaoh. He sealed our souls with his own spirit and the members of our body with his own blood. He is the one who covered death with shame and cast the devil into mourning as Moses cast Pharaoh into mourning. He is the one who smote sin and robbed iniquity of offspring. He is the one who brought us out of slavery into freedom, out of darkness into light, out of death into life, out of tyranny into an eternal kingdom, who made us a new priesthood, a people chosen to be his own forever. He is the Passover that is our salvation, he is the one who endured every kind of suffering in all those who foreshadowed him. In Abel, he was slain. In Isaac, bound. In Jacob, exiled. In Joseph, sold. In Moses, exposed to die. He was sacrificed in the Passover lamb, persecuted in David, dishonored in the prophets. It is he who was made man of the virgin, he who hung on the tree. It is he who was buried in the earth, raised from the dead, and taken up to the heights of heaven. He is the mute lamb, the slain lamb, the lamb born of Mary, the fair youth. He was seized from the flock, dragged off to be slaughtered, sacrificed in the evening, and buried at night. On the tree no bone of his was broken, in the earth his body knew no decay. He is the one who rose from the dead and who raised man from the depths of the tomb. Everyone has sinned and is deprived of God's glory. We are justified through the free gift of his grace and through the redemption of Christ Jesus. God made Christ's sacrificial death the means of expiating the sins of all believers. This is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. God made Christ's sacrificial death the means of expiating the sins of all believers. Just a few words from on the first reading today from Hebrews. And just that reminder that Jesus suffered all things that we suffer. You know, we're going on, what, three weeks almost, two and a half weeks of, of uh, social isolating and something that's very different and it's stressful. And, you know, I, I noticed it in myself yesterday. I had a real nice conversation with a friend and and uh, a couple other friends in the last couple of days that it's just really been stressful putting people kind of on edge and at wit's end you know jesus experienced the same thing he knows what we're going through just imagine how he was feeling knowing that his death was coming at the last supper as he's sitting there with somebody that uh, he knows is going to betray him who has already sold him out for 30 pieces of silver just the stress that he was under. We see it in the garden where he goes off to pray and he goes all the way off by himself, but he asks his friends to be with him and you can just wonder and what was his tone of voice when he said, could you not pray with me for an hour? In my hour? You know, he's, you know, you could get that sense of frustration. You know, he's a little bit on edge himself. He's just crying and, and sweating blood as he says, Father, can we do this a different way? Holy Thursday is the beginning of the Passion. The garden, his suffering really begins today in a, in, in a marked way. But he also has promised us his spirit, the spirit that strengthened him to say, not my will, but thy will be done. 
he too was comforted by the angels and the Lord, you know, you ask the Lord for to send angels to comfort you. And sometimes that will be in a spiritual sense and sometimes it will be in your friends and the people that you can reach out to or who will reach out to you. But don't be afraid to reach out. Jesus himself reached out. He brought his disciples with him to the garden and he brought his three closest friends, Peter, James, and John, even closer with him as they, as they went off to pray. And know that you're not alone in these days and we'll get through it. As we go through the passion, we await the resurrection. Those moments of grace and joy and laughter that we experience each day, even if it's sometimes only for a few minutes or maybe it's for a few hours, but a con there will come a new spring, a time when this has passed. And we thank the Lord for this day where he suffers with us. Look, O Lord, and see my suffering. Come quickly to my aid. O shepherd of Israel, hear us, you who lead Joseph's flock. Shine forth from your cherubim throne upon Ephraim, Benjamin, Manasseh. O Lord, rouse up your might. O Lord, come to our help. God of hosts, bring us back. Let your face shine on us, and we shall be saved. Lord, God of hosts, how long will you frown on your people's sleep? You have fed them with tears for their bread, and abundance of tears for their drink. You have made us the taunt of our neighbors. Our enemies laugh at us to scorn. God of hosts, bring us back. Let your face shine on us, and we shall be saved. You brought a vine out of Egypt. You planted, you drove out the nation. Before it, you cleared the ground. It took root and spread through the land. The mountains were covered with shadow. The cedars of God with its bough. It stretched out its branches to the sea. To the great river it stretched out its shores. Then why have you broken down its wall? It is plucked by all who pass by. It is ravaged by the boar of the forest, devoured by the beasts of the field. God of hosts, turn again, we implore. Look down from heaven and see. Visit the vine and protect it. The vine your right hand has planted. They have burnt it with fire and destroyed it. May they perish at the sign of your face. May your hand be on the man you have, you have chosen, the man you have given your strength. And we shall never forsake you again. Give us life that we may call upon your name. God of hosts, bring us back. Let your face shine on us, and we shall be saved. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Look, O Lord, and we, and see my suffering. Come quickly to my aid. Let us pray. Lord God, eternal shepherd, you so tend the vineyard you planted that now it extends its branches even to the farthest coast. Look down on your church and come to us. Help us remain in your sun as branches on the vine that planted firmly in your love. We may testify before the world to your great power working everywhere through Christ our Lord. Amen. God is my Savior, I trust in him and shall not fear. I give you thanks, O Lord, though you have been angry with me, your anger has abated and you have consoled me. God indeed is my Savior, I am 
confident and unafraid. My strength and my courage is the Lord, and he has been my Savior. With joy you will draw water at the fountain of salvation and say on that day, Give thanks to the Lord, acclaim his name. Among the nations make known his deeds. Proclaim how exalted is his name. Sing praise to the Lord for his glorious achievement. Let this be known throughout all the earth. Shout with exultation, O city of Zion. For great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. God is my Savior. I trust in him and shall not fear. The Lord has fed us with the finest wheat. He has filled us with honey from the rock. Bring out your joy to God, our strength. Shout in triumph to the God of Jacob. Raise a song and sound of timbrel, the sweet sounding harp and the lute. Blow the trumpet at the new moon, when the moon is full on our feet. For this is Israel's law, a command of the God of Jacob. He imposed it as a rule on Joseph, when he went out against the land of Egypt. A voice I did not know said to me, I freed your shoulder from the burden. Your hands were freed from the yoke. You called in distress and I saved you. I answered concealed in the storm cloud. At the waters of Meribah I tested you. Listen, my people, to my warning. O Israel, if you if only you would be. Let there be no foreign god among you, no worship of an alien god. I am the Lord your God who brought you from the land of Egypt. Open wide your mouth and I will fill it. But my people did not heed my voice, and Israel would not obey. So I left them in their stubbornness of heart to follow their own design. Oh, that my people would heed me, that Israel would walk in my ways. At once I would subdue their foes, turn my hand against their enemies. The Lord's enemies would cringe at their feet, and their subjection would last forever. But Israel I would feed with fine and sweet, and fill them with honey from the rock. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord has fed us with the finest wheat. He has filled us with honey from the rock. Let us pray. Lord God, open our mouths to proclaim your glory. Help us to leave sin behind and to rejoice in professing your name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. We see Jesus crowned with glory and honor because he suffered death, that through God's gracious will he might taste death for the sake of all men. Indeed, it was fitting that when bringing many sons to glory, God, for whom and through whom all things exist, should make their leader in the work of salvation perfect through suffering. By your own blood, Lord, you brought us back to God. By your own blood, Lord, you brought us back to God. From every tribe and tongue and people and nation, you brought us back to God. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. By your own blood, Lord, you brought us back to God.
I have longed to eat this meal with you before I suffer. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us. He promised to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our lives. You, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. I have longed to eat this meal with you, before I suffer. The Father anointed Christ with the Holy Spirit to proclaim forgiveness to those in bondage, but as humbly call upon the eternal priest, they rogamo, Lord, hear our prayer. You went up to Jerusalem to suffer and to enter into your glory, bring your church to the Passover feast of heaven. They rogamo, Lord, hear our prayer. You were lifted high on the cross and pierced by the soldier's lance. Heal our wounds. Hey, Lord, hear our prayer. You made the cross the tree of life. Give its fruit to those reborn in baptism. Hey, Lord, hear our prayer. On the cross you forgave the repentant thief. Forgive us our sins. Hey, Lord, hear our prayer. Take a moment to add our own intentions at this time in our hearts. Special way for all those experiencing high levels of stress, for, for caregivers and all those frontline workers who are uh, deemed essential workers, uh, from housekeepers and, and caregivers to uh, nurses and doctors, to moms and to, to dads, to children who are in stress. Some intentions we carry in our hearts, we pray to the Lord. Te rogamo, Lord, hear our prayer. At the Savior's command, as formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. O God, who anointed your only begotten Son with the Holy Spirit and made him Christ and Lord, graciously granted, being made sharers in his consecration, we may bear witness to your redemption in the world. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, 
one God forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. The blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Tonight, as we have our, we'll have the Lord's Supper, the Mass of the Lord's Supper at uh, 7 p.m. You can join us uh, on YouTube, ascension.church.pdx. And, uh, but also something you might do tonight as a family is just wash one another's feet. There won't be the washing of feet during the Mass, but that's something you can do as a family, of just making your own little liturgy at home, uh, reading the, the scriptures or um, during the, the preparation of the gifts, you could wash one another's feet or at the, at the end of the, of the Mass. Peace and blessings to you. We'll see you again tomorrow at 9 a.m.